Um, I have the opportunity to minister to high school seniors and college freshmen all the time through my Freshman 15 ministry. And it is so neat to see uh, students who have been given this firm foundation in their homes go off to college and just soar because they have that faith secure in them. But I have to tell you that the statistics aren't good for what's out there for our college freshmen. Studies show that 80% of students will fall away from their faith during their freshman year, which means they'll stop going to church and they'll stop reading their Bible and they'll stop choosing for Christian friends. And it's a little scary when we think about that. But I don't want you to be nervous because I have five tips I'd like to give you that will help your child be part of the 20%. That 20% that just keeps plugging along in their faith and that focus on God keeps them making the right choices and giving God glory through their college experience. And so I want to give you five things that you can do to help your child. Uh, the first three are things you can start doing now before they transition into college. And the first one is one I mentioned a little bit earlier, and that is to start giving them a little more freedom. As they go through their senior year, this is a great time uh, to have a testing ground for them where they can start experiencing some new freedoms and they can start feeling out what it's going to be like when they get to college and they, they don't have a curfew and they get to choose their friends and they get to go on road trips and things like that. And so you want to start providing practice for them to do those things in a safe environment. You know, that's one of the real challenges, I think, but the real rewarding things about these kids as they get into the, the later years, and you're talking about launching them into the world, mm -hmm. is giving them room before you launch uh, for them to figure some stuff out. Now, that's very difficult. That's very much just like when the kids were little and they're trying to ride the bike without training wheels. Mm -hmm. You don't want to take your hand off the seat because you're afraid they're going to fall, but you have to take your hand off the seat if they're ever going to learn that they can ride. For our oldest daughter, the hardest thing that she has to do is being able to, or she has in her life, is being able to make decisions. She just <laughs> waits and waits and waits and weighs all the options and doesn't ever pull the trigger on anything. So for me, helping to launch her is actually to force her to start making those decisions. And if she makes a mistake, then so be it. Deal with the consequences. But, you know, knowing that's an issue for her, helping to, her to make decisions in small things is has been really helpful and then now she starts to make bigger decisions that will affect the trajectory of her life she can she can do that knowing that um, she doesn't have to be afraid as they got older I mean you can't keep them under such a rigid you know whether it's learn washing your clothes or learning to wash your clothes or you know when to be responsible I think you can't keep them under a really tight schedule and then all of a sudden when they graduate from high school say go make good decisions I think that you know we tried to let them make the mistakes or you know while they were under our roof we can be there and say we still love you God still loves you this is a really bad decision this is having some bad consequences but you know God made 24 hour days and tomorrow you get to start with a new day <laughs> Um, and having that opportunity been quite a challenge for me. If I was left to my own devices, I think I would have uh, really tried to control their behavior more. Um, but we feel like God has led us to, again, try to train their heart, give them room to operate in, be there when they succeed to cheer, and be there when they fall to lift them up. The second thing is, along with that, to say yes as often as possible. Uh, my parents did this, and because of that, I, I never had a sense of feeling like I needed to rebel against them because they really tried to say yes. When they needed to say no, they would say, let me think about it. And they would talk to each other, and they would take a little time, and they would come back and they would sit me down. And I knew that when they said no, that I, I couldn't go to a certain event, or I couldn't go on a certain trip with my friends, or we couldn't have this certain expense that when they said no it was because they really meant it and I didn't argue with them because they really reserved those no's. The third thing to help start transitioning your child into college is to start paving the way that faith path to their new college campus. So as you go with them to look at colleges, you need to be looking at churches. So not, not only you're checking out college campuses, but you're seeing 
where your child is going to, to grow in their faith during that time. And so once you land on a college, please make sure that you go and when you do your visits, that you go and you check out the churches and that you really talk with your child about that and you talk with them about where they might wanna get involved, what ministries they would like to do, et cetera, so that they are ready to get plugged into that church. I remember right before I left uh, for college, uh, my parents taking me on a, a trip uh, to go visit the college of my choice uh, that I was going to be attending. And um, we did all the fun things of checking out uh, the campus and going to buy a t-shirt and um, looking at all the classes and all those fun things. Uh, but one of the most significant things that really sticks out to me that they did uh, was that Sunday we got up and we looked for a church to go to. Uh, at the campus that I was going to be going to. And um, afterwards, we went and had lunch, and we sat down, and um, they just asked good questions of, what did you like about it? What did you not like about it? Um, are there any things that, um, that really just grabbed your attention? Um, did you think it was biblically based, uh, what the pastor was talking about? Was the worship music engaging? Um, just all these different things that really caused me to think, and it really set me up well. Once they get to school, um, I have two more very important things that will help them keep secure to their faith. Uh, one of those is to talk to them, but more importantly, to listen. As they call home and as they're worried about things and anxious or may email you, that you would resist that urge that you have as a parent to fix it or to tell them immediately what they need to do and just really just sit back and listen to what they're saying and just remember that they need to hear from you that you believe that the Lord is with them and guiding them and that they're going to have great success in college because they have a savior who has gone with them. And so just encourage them, remind them that they are on that college campus to glorify their Lord and savior. You know, we send them off to college and we pretty much thought, okay, well, he's gonna be, he's mature now, he's independent. And we've come to find out that really, we still needed to parent him. We still needed to be involved in his life and, uh, and, and, you know, it was a humbling experience to realize we, we, we actually dropped the ball there. And, and we're and, not talking, I don't think you need to be Skyping every single day or anything like that, but right. maybe one of the things we'd like to do is set a Sunday afternoon and say, this is going to be our time. I thought I was pretty good for the distance I was. I felt like over college I, I came home. And the important thing about that is when you, when you do come home, from the parent's perspective, although it, I, would, I would urge you to be selfless and for that to be really a haven, for your for your child when they come home and for that to be a really uh, a place of peace and, and enjoyment you're only going to have them for 48 hours usually um, but students you know I saw students that didn't want to go home because you know that wasn't the case and so uh, that was really important I would come home and I would be refreshed and the other thing which both of you did really well was they called a lot and we we um, you know we would talk over video chat some and, and we we had Sunday night dinner we had a, a Sunday night yeah, we dinner. had dinner together a we had times. A, what we called Skype dinner yeah and so we'd set the computer on the table and the three of us would have dinner together yeah a lot of Sunday nights for a long time mom would start pushing me to like make my own doctor's appointments and just kind of slowly teaching me to be independent so that whenever I got to school I didn't you know become lost in needing to be dependent 100% on them and just even though that's not like a spiritual thing it's just it's helpful to know that you can do it on your own or you've been given chances where you're able to be independent before you leave so that you're not you know at this new place with no one there to help you and so you don't lose your way. If you want your daughter when she's driving up and down a highway to go to college to know how to change a tire, you better teach her how to change a tire or how to call the tire, tire changing people to come help her. Um, if you want your son or daughter to know how to do their income tax when they hit adulthood, if you want your um, young kids to know how to say yes ma'am and no ma'am, or your son to open a door for a young woman and treat her like she should be treated on a date or just in a classroom, then you better teach that because the gravitational pull of their world is not toward God and toward good, it's away from God and away from good. So any skills you want them to have when they hit adulthood, you gotta give them overtly or it will not happen. They need to see that Christianity actually rises to the level of being true or false, that there are good reasons to believe it's true, and that if it is true, it speaks to every area of life. And they need to be growing in that. Um, we don't need a six-year-old faith, we need a college-age faith 
in Christ and in God, and that worldview needs to be growing. So encourage that. Get them some books. Get them some resources. Help them go to some conferences, things like that, so that they can continue to develop uh, the discipleship of the mind, especially during the college years. When I was a teenager, I insisted on buying cotton shirts, and so my mom, my mom made me learn how to iron them because she didn't want to, you know, learn, you know, she didn't want to do it. So I had to learn how to do it. And so now, when my son goes out and buys cotton shirts, I'm like, okay, you're going to have to learn how to iron. And so, uh, so he will, he does. And so, passing on that man tradition <laughs> I, of ironing. So. Yeah. I, I gave her a goal that if you could go through college without drinking, which I knew led to other things, um, I would give her a, um, a special gift. And um, it was a significant gift, um, and it was worth it to me to give that. And I can recall going, what? <laughs> you committed us to, to what? Do what? He couldn't work the that. washing machine, so oh, yeah, he took is, his computer yeah. and faced it uh, at look, the washing machine. I, I, I was I was a punk. I don't know what permanent press meant. I was like, okay, so, see this you know, button. I've made sure my kids have had a credit card from about the time that they could drive, so that they could learn to deal with this access to what looks like free money, <laughs> and to deal with this concept that you know it's easier to buy it today, but you have to pay for it and not carrying a balance on your credit card, paying it off, not don't, don't accrue debt, you know, some biblical principles about uh, some of those issues. So I think parents can also pass on actual life skills and business skills and, you know, if you're going to say you're going to do something, you better do it. And if it's not right, then I'm going to come back and say, here's how I would have liked it done. And um, I've had that privilege of kind of mentoring her and discipling her in a career as well.